I've been teaching the word for the past uh, 30, 35 years. So teachers usually ask questions. When you read Bible also, when you put right questions, you will get right answers. Putting right questions during our meditation or devotion, you get right answers. What is God's purpose for each and every one of our life? For me, personally, for me, what is God's purpose? Do we know? See, what is the purpose of this table here? What is God's purpose? Yes. Display the character. That is called uh, transformation. That's a process. It's a process. Here, uh, confirmation to the image. We'll, uh, Romans 8 29. I put it in New Living Translation. I think all the verses would appear in the screen. For God knew his people in advance and chose them to become like his son so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. To become like his son in character. So what uh, our dear brother said is right. Reflecting the character of Christ. That is God's purpose for me. What is my purpose? What is the purpose of me living on this earth? Why am I on this earth? What am I living for? Yes, yes. God's purpose concerning me, every individual. That is the life purpose verse. Not only here, all over the world. I put it in New American Standard Bible because uh, that goes very close with King James Version. For those whom uh, he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed. Conformed, the term is very important. Conformed. Confirmation is the final stage, the goal. But the process is transformation. The confirmation is final. The process, Romans 12 to says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Do not conform. That means don't follow the pattern of this world. So conforming. That confirmation happens through transformation. Transformation. Changing day by day. See, everything changes. So how do we change ourselves? How does God change us? Transformation. Here, I said it's a, it's a continuing process. When will it end? There is another verse, Second Corinthians 3.18. We all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed. See the frame, phrase, being transformed. We are being transformed. The job has not yet been completed, but we are being transformed. Every day he transforms us. Do you agree with? Whatever happens in my life, wherever I go, whomever I meet, all the meetings and all the devotions, whatever I do, only one purpose. We are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Just as from the Lord, the Spirit. We are being transformed. The Lord is transforming us every day. See, life is a test. <coughs> life is not easy. Do you agree with it? Life is not easy. Accept Jesus. You live wonderful and go to heaven. No. If you accept Jesus to go through trials and temptations, character building is there. God loves you very much. God loves you so much. And he loves you so much that he doesn't want to remain as you are. He wants you to grow. Living things grow. See, we will only live for 70 years. The Lord has uh, rented this world for 70 years. Whatever you have, 
you have a car you have a house whatever you have all you own is loaned by god someone said all you own is loaned by god we know loan bank loan very familiar nowadays they phone and ask us they want loan so many lakhs so many thousands within few seconds so all we own is loaned by god god has loaned this world for us for 60 years 70 years what for to be trained this life is a probation this is a rehearsal but the real life it's there 60 years 70 years we will live then for trillions of years we will be living up there so what we do here we will do there also what is heaven like do you think uh, do you think in heaven people will be with a white dress with a white long hair all the time sitting on the cloud and playing violin boring i don't want to go to such a heaven heaven is the most beautiful place it is explained with the most beautiful words in the book of revelation so we will be spending uh, trillions of years there but here i need to prepare for the transformation transformation is the process every day is a test life is a test god tests me every day when i meet someone the way i talk the way i move the way i handle the money integrity i was talking integrity integrity is different from faithfulness sincerity sincerity is what you see what I, what i am in front of you integrity is what am i in dark integrity when no one sees how do i behave that is integrity integrity is connected with the heart sincerity is connected with our activities when somebody sees so transformation 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 is the process and confirmation is the perfection so here how does god transform us i'm coming to ephesians now ephesians is a epistle for the church what is church who is church who is church not a building not a building not like this is for our comfort okay this is for our comfort god is not living in any buildings building is not church what is church church i am the church you are the church you are the temple of the living god don't you know that the holy spirit dwells in you that is first corinthians okay i am the temple we say i go to church no 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 i am the church this place is a gathering is a place for gathering church church is gathering here christuvin sabai koodum idam this is a place where the body of christ church gathers here in church of christ the right okay how does god change us the classic passage the right passage is seen in ephesians 4 i think pastor wilson would have told you the background of uh, how ephesians was written after finishing three missionary journeys paul was uh, arrested and he was put in custody in jail at caesarea for two years so they want to inquire him inquiry 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 nobody tried to uh, nobody helped him to come out of the jail and finally he appealed to the caesar to the rome so he was sent to rome so they traveled i think 27 26 27 acts 27 they traveled to rome by ship after 3 months 3 4 5 months they reached rome so paul was there in acts 28 he was there and he was allowed to rent a house for him and people from thessalonica uh, uh, dr luke who wrote the uh, acts of the apostles and uh, gospel of luke they were all with him in the jail he conducted prayer meeting every day people got saved he was teaching every day in the prison he was house arrested 
24 hours he was chained with another praetorian guard so 6 hours duty 6 hours duty means four guards per day so two years calculate because of this this praetorian guards they guarded paul many of them got saved so one special permission for this guards was that they could reach to the uh, caesar's family emperor's family directly because of these preachers these uh, praetorian guards uh, nero's wife got saved nero's mother in law got saved he killed both of them because they accepted christ he burned them alive for 12 years this praetorian guards were kept in rome after that they were transferred as the head of the city the roman colonial cities so gospel went uh, from rome through this uh, uh, praetorian guards they were the head of the city so lord said i will use you in rome how not on the stages but in jail so many of them got saved so when paul writes to philippians he says the house of caesar greet you it means many of them got saved through his meetings it is in those meetings onosimo got saved who ran away from philemon's house philemon was a uh, was a believer of colosse is a very rich man and colossian church at colosse gathered in his house so paul sent back this man this onosimo onosimus to uh, philemon's house because you got said go and reconcile with your master that was the situation paul wrote if you read uh, acts chapter 28 that's the background uh, paul wrote it so ephesian and colossians both are uh, circular letters they read it in all the churches they are called twin epistles um, ephesians speaks about the body of christ and colossians paul writes about the head of the body that is jesus christ so ephesians is a apt epistle for the believers my pastor pastor vijay raghava iyangar so ephesians it's a epistle for church so chapter 4 paul speaks about uh, about the transformation of the new life that we have received in that classic passage in ephesians if we take a uh, from Ephesians chapter 4 uh, verses you can ask me questions you can you can intervene and ask me questions or doubts i'll try to clarify it okay if you read it uh, from 11 from 11 to uh, 32 that he says specially the particular verse the transformation appears there um if you read was uh, ephesians 20 21 if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct means character the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind romans 12:2 and this verse and be renewed in the spirit of his your mind and that you put on the new man new character which was created according to god in true righteousness and holiness this is how to put on and how to put off how does god change us how does god help us <clears throat> to take off put off our characters old characters we all have character flaws inherited habits and acquired habits inherited habits when we are born those cannot be changed that is called sinful nature or inborn nature I don't know if you read a book Tim Lawhey has written a book Spirit Control Temperament and uh, another one Dr Thompson has written The Walls of My Heart and God's Plumb Line written two books 
they depict they explain our inner character where we can change god doesn't expect us to change in our inherited habits but in the acquired habits we acquire habits we learn things from civilization from friends from our school from our office from our colleagues even from our parents they false prophecy all these people authority figures they false prophesy us you will not use be useful you are useless these are all false prophecies prophecies some of the false prophecies teachers say and our authority figures say and we build our life on that not on the word of god we believe to build our life on what others say the false prophecies but not on the word of god which says speaks the truth now how does god change us how can we be transformed for transformation number 1 we need training i have 60s okay training we need to be trained if you read second timothy 2 verse 2 paul says the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses entrust those to faithful people who will be able to teach others paul is teaching to timothy timothy's is to teach others and others would entrust it to the faithful people four generation of people it means we need to train people i need to be trained someone said every paul needs a timothy every timothy needs a paul it is said we need a life team to be successful what is our life team because we can't do anything alone that is that holy spirit is there how does the holy spirit work god allows people allows situations and uh, trials trials temptations and treachery treachery is of people okay now that's another topic uh, here how does uh, god the life team i said the life team mentors models uh partners and friends mentors they train you they make you they shape you models they lead you by example boss says you do it you should do it you should pray you should read bible boss but leader says let us let us let us so jesus was a leader when somebody says brother or sister are you like this will you change don't worry that is boss there is no bossship in christianity only leadership leader says let us i include myself when i teach you when i preach i also include myself preachers are not from heaven okay we are not from heaven we are also ordinary people like others we are ordinary men like patients patients like you so uh, we need life team for success no individual success we need a team for a successful thing if you see another next slide i want to take it from uh, efficiency it says so christ himself gave the apostles the prophets the evangelists the pastors and teachers in king james version says he gave some apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers not some and teachers so pastors and teachers they do the same ministry okay pastor should be able to teach so i'll show you apostles prophets apostles governing ministry prophets guiding ministry evangelists gathering they gather for the church 
you guess this can't you can't lift it up alone without so it it only stand with it gathers for the church pastors they ground the church ring extra attachment they ground the church and the last finger um, teachers they teach it can go into our ears not only ears it should not come here should go deeper okay so 5g's then itself we have 5g's apostles govern the church govern the church leadership prophets guide the church and evangelists gather the church pastors uh, ground the church sorry god the church teaches ground the church they establish people that is why the lord has put in the church in what ministry you are fitting in we don't need titles we don't need titles like reverend apostle or prophet if you prefix prophet in your name if it doesn't come true people will stone you to death in the old testament he is a prophet what he said has not happened okay bring him before the crowd and they will stone him to death so when you say prophet you have to be careful now always they say foretelling foretelling foretell not foretelling it's fourth telling okay prophet he expounds the message of god he receives message from god and he expounds it there was one prophet in the book of jeremiah anania azaria he said no the king of babylon will not come only 2 years jeremiah said because you told lie you will die this year before the end of the year that fellow died when king zedekia was carried down to captivity uh, jeremiah was asking call your prophets they said nebuchadnezzar won't come see what's happening now zedekia asked jeremiah is there a special message for me private message for me yes what they will pluck your eyes and take you to babylon this is the message the lord is giving you it's exactly happen if you, if you surrender to babylonian king you'll be safe unless they'll pluck your eyes and take you can take you captive to babylon it so happened we need prophets like that if there is a prophet like that who will accept him reason people don't invite me to speak is i am straight for i talk like this so my close friend said if you come and preach that's all whatever we preach will be nothing I said no 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 i am also preaching from the word of god you are also preaching from the word of god you say doctrine 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 and whatever we preach becomes nothing the next week they expect us to preach like you know you can't preach like me you teach the word i said so here it is god has put us in the church for training training we need to be trained everyone needs to be trained a coach a player needs a coach vocal singer they need a coach to learn anything you need a coach we need a teacher to learn alphabets so we need say one cricket player he was getting out a very good player sachin tendulkar he was getting out very soon for few years then he was specially coached he said i stood in the wrong direction my handling of my bat was wrong so i corrected that angle then i started scoring runs he said how what does the coach do the coach minimizes our weakness and maximizes our strength okay so we need a trainer we need a coach you need a pastor you need an elder you need someone to mentor you because they minimize your weakness and maximizes your strength god always minimizes our weakness and maximizes our strength through people not directly from heaven he allows people god allows certain people in our lives so that we might learn so coaching is needed we need a <coughs> coaching to be successful training read the second scripture in fact though by this time you ought to be teachers hebrews 5:12 to 14 ought to be teachers 
you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of god's word all over again you need milk not solid food anyone who lives on milk being still infant is not acquainted with the teaching about the righteousness but solid food is for the mature not the phrase solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil by constant use we need solid food word of god reading scripture it's like a milk we can intake scriptures like milk for the uh, beginning believers new believers then meal just a little bit of grown believers then meat for the mature believers milk meal and meat three things how do we intake do you want to understand the bible do you want to get something from daily reading what we should do go slow read slow slow face take five verses that's enough because we read all scripture all scripture second timothy 3 16 and 17 all scripture is given by the spirit of god all scripture so it is beneficial it is beneficial for teaching doctrine and reproof correction and teaching righteousness so that man of god may be equipped for any good work so uh the two phrases scriptures and word of god scriptures is a written word of god and word of god word of the lord thus saith the lord or else the word of the lord came to me nisikil the word of the lord it's not the written word that inspired word inspired word so scriptures from the scriptures we can listen to the word of the lord scriptures is logos and word of god word of the lord is a rehma some verse they take some scripture they take here and there they say the lord will wipe your tears no it is none of such a business in the bible that is that is not a new testament preaching many of our present day preaching doesn't agree with the bible especially the new testament bible god will wipe your tears god will uh, god will give you a lot of money a lot of blessings nothing is there god will help you to pay back all your loans he will do your miracle right now i went to a church that worship leader before i preach he said lift up your hands and praise him and speak in tongues the lord is going to outpour his spirit right now all your debts will be over so they all clapped their hands and spoke in tongues and prayed then i went to preach say you all prayed and worshiped the lord has poured this holy spirit on you and your debts are over they all said amen they all shouted amen i said i like it then i said tomorrow the one who bought, uh, lent you the money will come you tell him don't come here onwards on sunday the lord has poured his spirit on us we prayed all our debts are over so debts your money will come back to you don't come i said the pastor was looking at me are i told you to preach why are you telling all this no you said what is not true <laughs> that's why people don't like me <laughs> these are sudden things uh, these people don't realize life is not easy we need trials we need temptations to grow in our life so we need to distinguish from bit from good and evil that only comes through training training so we need training praise god god has put us put us all in a church where we can be trained and coached towards eternal life amen number 2 we need the truth the lord uses the truth Ephesians 4 14 and 15 then we will 
no longer be like children forever changing our minds about what we believe because someone has told us something different or made a lie like the truth in said we will hold to the truth in love becoming more and more like Christ who is the head of his body the church the truth we will hold to the truth in love see the truth is necessary jesus said use them to complete use the truth to complete them that means perfect them perfect uh, the believers the truth makes us complete what is truth is word the word is truth jesus said your word is truth so use the truth to to complete we need truth truth makes you free jesus said in john chapter 8 you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free liberated free from ignorance okay so he told he i think he told the jews who believed him in john chapter 8 yes to the jews who believed him looking at them jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free liberate you it will deliver you from your ignorance so we need truth do we use the truth to get rid of our ignorance how do we use the truth okay truth of god truth from the word of god it delivers us it 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 liberates us truth we truth needs truth is needed for our change for our transformation for our character building okay truth is needed ephesians 4:21 since you have heard all about him you have learned the truth that is in jesus learn the truth so not only the truth is enough but we must learn the truth learn the truth i don't know if you have noticed the word in james chapter 1 verse 25 yeah 125 but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty looks in look intently none of the translation says look intently look closely keenly in tamil uttru paathu how do we read the scriptures look intently uttru paathu a deep look okay not gazing look intently priyam 25 he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it not only one day but continues in it okay continues in it and is not forgetful remembering it memorizing but a doer of the word doer of doer of the work this one will be blessed in what he does so learning the truth and practicing the truth if he learn the truth we need to practice it the problem is uh, when we meditate when we do a meditation or devotion we we don't write it many of us we don't write it whatever you don't write any preaching here you, you here on sunday the teaching here on sunday if you don't write it you intend to forget 95% of what is heard within 72 hours by the time you come to wednesday you forget 95% of what is heard on sunday what did he preach he told the story he told the joke but not the verse correct uh, uh so we must make a note of uh, uh jot it down jot it down uh, you must have the habit of jotting down i lost many of such an insights feeling lazy i got volumes of this diary 
so whatever we write it sometimes this commentators bible translators they easily skip away some certain uh, difficult scriptures easily skip away at this time our meditation helps what they didn't explain the spirit of god will explain to us till reveal to us one of the primary ways of god speaking to us is a revelation revelation is what directly it's it's an inspiration inspiration or illumination to our mind a special light to that particular verse okay learn the truth to be blessed i use that words comes again use the truth to make them complete your word is truth learning the truth god uses the truth to transform us number 3 just for remembering i just put it in uh, uh, words in, uh, in the same letters in arithmetic way thinking new thinking i say it new thinking ephesians 4 uh, 17 to 19 don't keep living as the ungodly do i think it's a new new living translation is it okay don't keep living as the ungodly do for they are hope Hopelessly, in other translation, it comes, don't walk as ungodly. Um, for they are hopelessly confused in their thinking. Their closed minds are full of darkness. They are far away from life God gives because they have shut their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They don't care anymore about right and wrong. And they have indulged themselves in the world. in all kinds of immorality evil thinking and the constant desire for more thinking change your thinking change your thinking romans 12 it says let god change your thoughts that's mean i have to let allow god to change my thoughts think in a different way we always think in a different way but god god's thoughts his thoughts are far away from our thoughts so how do we use our mind see thinking is very important small worry like a small mustard seed it's planted in our mind somewhere from somewhere from nowhere it comes to our mind suddenly it becomes very big so change your thinking allow god to change our thinking someone said autopilot change your autopilot by changing your thinking you can know the, you can know the perfect will of god by uh, by allowing god to change your thinking you can know the perfect will of god so change your thinking new thinking new thinking put off the old man In other words, it says, you put off the old man, put off the old thinking, Ephesians 4, 17 to 9. Instead, there must be a spiritual renewal of your thoughts and attitudes. Instead of thinking old, thinking the same thing again and again. Want to change the way you act? Want to change the way you speak? I must change the way I think. my thinking results in my speech and in my speech results in my action so to change the way i act change the way i speak to change the way i speak change the way i think the thought the thought matters so instead there must be a spiritual renewal of your thoughts and attitudes that's important I have to do it. See, salvation is free. I didn't do anything for salvation. I just believed in. Even to believe, God has given me the grace to believe in. Pharaoh, when the gospel was presented to Pharaoh, he didn't accept. Who am I? Or who is he that I should obey? Who is Jehovah that I should obey? Five times for five plagues, he hardened his heart pharaoh next five times god hardened his heart so the first time when the gospel is presented 
it depends on the response of the individual when the gospel is presented to him so god has chosen him to reveal his anger wrath it says the bible says so we must change our thoughts new thoughts different thoughts christian thoughts a believer's thoughts not christian a believer's thought how should i think of somebody what do i think of so and so their behavior their belief hmm? why do we hate somebody all the time for years together somebody in our mind always lives there without paying any rent we always take him eh huh? he doesn't pay any rent all the time he bothers us why change your thought change your thought if we keep on hating somebody we will act like him no if we keep on i don't like that man but everything we do will be like that him only <laughs> who we hate the most we act like him the most okay so we must change our thoughts god uses our thoughts for transformation it's a day to day affair the thoughts none of the translation let the spirit change your way of thinking that means i must allow let means what let 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 me in that means you must allow me to come in so let the spirit change your way of thinking people say the same coimbatore city there were so many tarry meetings for the baptism of the holy spirit those days in 70s there were not so many pentecostal churches when there is an announcement so and so is coming he is a gifted man if he lays his hands on you he will receive holy spirit people will run there so much emphasis was given on speaking in tongues so in pentecostal churches the only music instrument they had taros people was a drum bang 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 like that so they emphasized on speaking in tongues they just stopped with the speaking in tongues they fight speaking in tongues they don't change their character they cheat and they bribe all they fight when the water tank comes municipal lorry you know municipal water tank comes they fight <laughs> so they do all these things there is no change of attitude no not only speaking in tongues it's only an initial evidence maybe but after that i was teaching in a in a in a bible school i said the purpose of holy spirit was not only to speak in tongues your character formation many of them uh, finding it very hard to understand and accept it i gave them an assignment give me an assignment of 50 bible references or 50 or 60 bible references from the whole bible about the holy spirit especially from the new testament and they said pastor what you said is true but what we understood was wrong See, when they say Holy Spirit, they only think of speaking in tongues. No, let the Spirit change your way of thinking. I have to. I should allow the Spirit. He will not compel me. Say one thing: God will never, 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 never compel you to do good. It's a choice. Life is full of choice. God said, "I place before you life and death, curse and blessing." you choose what you want so choice is ours so we have to let if we don't let he won't change us it's our part 100% salvation is free sanctification is expensive okay salvation is free sanctification is expensive i need to pay the price and for taming the tongue transformation taming the tongue no more pretense i think this is from message translation no more pretense tell your neighbor the truth in christ's body we are all connected to each other 
so if you live if you lie to others you end up lying to yourself speak the truth taming the tongue taming the tongue see efficient church was full of uh, uh, non jews they worshiped uh, they had a big temple diana lady diana is not a christian name <laughs> they say lady diana diana is not a christian name <laughs> diana diana's temple people went there to uh, it is called a red light uh, a red light business people went there to please the god they believed by doing a, a fornication they please god so there were uh, ladies dedicated to this business in the temple itself okay or devar adiyal di manga tamil la irundhathu that that the that culture came into hinduism also hinduism you know the tamil culture also so diana in the city in ephesus they used to uh, sell small uh, merchants small merchants they sell models temple models dianot's temple model the goddess model they earned a lot of money when paul preached all that all those business stopped that's why that's why he was beaten up in ephesus okay no pretense tell your truth not as others live don't speak lies paul was encouraging uh, asking these people to speak the truth because they were just uh, they just got saved Uh, from the heathenism non jewish practices he was telling them new testament new testament believers had no bible epistles until james wrote it in uh, in 50 <laughs> ever since the church was established in ad 32 33 they had no new testament only james wrote it they had called uh, uh, a book uh, teachings called didache doctrines of the apostles didache i think if you can google browse uh, use this uh, uh, term didache it has got 11 chapters so i think 11 chapter is the biggest one uh, the two ways fasting prayer how to treat others that's why james wrote this uh, uh, epistle it was the first epistle believed to be the first epistle written to the uh, believers so don't speak lies even james uh, dedicated a one whole chapter for uh, tongue that is 3 but i want to read another verse uh, proverbs chapter 18 proverbs chapter 18 i think verse 20 yeah i think we all can read it together it's a practice 20 are you ready is it displayed now proverbs 20 a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth from the produce of his lips he shall be filled death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit there is a fruit in my tongue what fruit death and life man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth from the produce of his lips he shall be filled not positive confession not positive confession but real confession there is a fruit there is a benefit from the words we speak how do we use the tongue maturity of a christian man maturity by uh, uh, james uses the word perfect seven times it's used in the epistle the greek term for this is telios telios seven times perfect means not sinless but sinless okay nobody can be sinless but we can be sinless we can practice it so perfect if you want to be perfect know how to control your tongue so taming the tongue 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 can be tamed like wild animals like horse rod or rod bit in the horse mouth it can be tamed so we need to tame the tongue 
how do we use our tongue so we need to practice using our tongue is it at times we are so soft at times we are so harsh we murder with the tongue we murder we don't murder with a uh, with a knife we have one knife one big knife to kill anybody by your tongue okay have you heard the story koma killed a man koma killed a man aha the king said he was a culprit finally he said uh, release him la hang him not release him he changed the comma hang him he said king said hang him not comma but uh, he wrote the judgment hang him comma not kill him vice versa the king said uh, king said hang him not he wrote hang him comma not kill him king said that fellow wrote uh, hang him so hang him not release him he changed the judgment comma killed the man the tongue the tongue he pronounced it wrongly so so it happened when we pronounce certain things wrongly it so happens so how do we use our tongue when the argument comes lower your volume when some argument comes without argument there is no life isn't so if we say we are blessed people we are spiritual people we don't argue we don't fight husband and wife in the house that is a fake that means you are not revealing your true true, true, true. you are not revealing yourself your your true self we are faking you are faking express yourself when argument comes lower the volume can we do it no we cannot suppose when you have a heated argument suppose uh, your cell phone rings how do you speak suppose we have to take it rings again and again how do you take how do you speak don't speak now we are arguing Cut. no we civilize our voice even if the argument is so heat so heated up between me and my wife or me and my son or my friend say hello where all the angry went jefferson said the former us president if you are angry count 10 and speak count 10 if you are very angry count 100 and speak he said the formula so that is to they celebrated 50th anniversary of a person they asked the secret of the success of their family life he said when we got married we decided any big decision comes husband will take care of it any small decision comes wife will take care of it so what happened so far in the 50 years there has never been a big decision he said <laughs> so you see our tongue is very important we are natural uh, because we are only once in a week we gather and rest of the 6 or 7 days we live in the world and we need to be practical of course we are living in the world which is affected and marred by sin and its consequences so we need to practice it very hard very hard life is not so easy taming the tongue i say it from the pulpit it's very easy to practice it very hard i must win we say no some i must win now. there is no fault in me 100% i am right no sir 0.1% you are wrong that's where i should keep quiet <laughs> huh? so taming the tongue number 5 here is he never use still in taming the tongue efficiency 429 never use harmful words but speak only what's helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen i've been speaking about the father heart of god for the past 7 uh, weeks in my church except uh, one sunday i was not there and another sunday we had a special speaker 
ఫాదర్ హార్ట్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ సో ఫాదర్ హార్ట్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ ఫాదర్ నెవర్ హార్మ్స్ ఎనీ బడి ఎనీ బడి అక్సెప్ట్స్ ఎవ్రీ బడి ఫాదర్ హ్యాస్ అ ప్లేస్ ఫర్ ఎవ్రీ సన్ అండ్ డాటర్ ఇన్ హిస్ ఫ్యామిలీ సో దట్ ఈస్ ఫాదర్ హార్ట్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ విత్ క్రియల్టీ హ్యూమన్ క్రియల్టీ and father is so cruel when we say to the boy think god as your father what will he think you see so father heart of god that means here the way we use we should reveal the father heart of god no harmful words so may the lord help us we say if i speak if i said is said huh if i said is said only one speak one word point blank no 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 not like that we must put some butter and jam in our tongue and speak so words come so polite so soft very hard to practice but god wants us these are all daily activities that happens god allows it when some situations go wrong we speak louder harsh so that's the test god sees how do we use our tongue when such a situation rise so we must be mindful that is a test for our character number 5 tender heart ephesians 4:32 be kind and loving to each other forgiving each other just as god forgave you in christ i think we were singing this also um uh, how long to forgive we set certain limits no this is the last time i will forgive you this is the last time never ever come and ask me forgiveness no more forgiveness get lost these are the words we use final judgment we condemn no not like that tender heart tender heart especially in our house we need to practice it in the house very easy to practice in the church when other saints are there we are saints with the saints someone said wonderful message after wonderful sermon of the pastor his wife ran to the house brought him a towel brought him a uh, uh, another dress a bucket and a mug and a plate i told him you be in the pulpit always <laughs> never get down of the pulpit because when you are in the pulpit you are just like an angel <laughs> so when you come home the story is different so we all like you to be on the pulpit so very easy to follow all such uh, spiritual practices in the church when i am with people like you but who am i in real life tender heart see we need to practice it slowly little by little we need to practice it it won't come in one night it is so deeply rooted all our harsh words and harsh behaviors so deeply rooted no one is taught us even from the pulpit they say blessings 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 healing right now miracles they only think oh, when will the miracle come when will the miracle come till they die no miracle comes say but these are the things uh, believers need to be taught i believe so tender heart so ephesians 4 verse 2 i think Ephesians 4 verse 2 I think in new living translation it's wonderful 4 to can we all read it please always be humble gentle patient with other ah making allowance for each other's fault give allowance we give allowance no at home making allowance for each other's fault 
because of friendship because of love we can make uh, allowance for each other's fault and somebody makes makes a mistake it's okay you are broken and i am broken and god knows it even our sin god takes into account okay why do we fall so that we might be considerate when others fall when i fall i think it's my weakness when i do something it's my weakness god will forgive me but when others do mistake no 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 place for forgiveness you're damned no 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 that's not judge we should not judge uh, we are, we are not to judge like that bible says so be kind to others god forgives us he keeps on forgiving us every day a man of 50 years would have uh, said uh, 50 lakh sorry as what the research says 50 lakhs man of 50 years would have said 50 lakhs time sorry excuse me jesus never said it so we need to give allowance for each other's mistake even our mistake god said takes into account so that we might become tender hearted thank you so much god bless god bless